shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Welcome. Okay, all the adults, you have your cell phones? Are they turned off? <laughs> not only do I have to check, not only am I going to check with you guys, I got to watch, I got to watch the ones up front, too. So, <laughs> all right. Welcome, everybody. We are so honored to have you all here on this beautiful Shabbat morning and uh, to be able to join together in our Shabbat worship and so forth. So, okay, I'm going to let you catch those last couple pictures, and now you're going to put it away, or I'm going to come collect it from you. <laughs> His son's looking over. I'm going, Dad. <laughs> I got gotcha. <laughs> you. Right. Because it's wonderful. We have our photographers that are in the back. They're going to capture everything, all of the moments there from the back. We are streaming live. We want to say Shabbat Shalom to all of you who are streaming into the services. Um, we're glad that you're able to join us this way. We're sorry you're not here with us personally, but you know what? That's okay. You're a part of this as well. In fact, is anybody, do you know if any family are streaming in? Um, no, nope, that's okay. Well, if this is Jack. <laughs> He's the bar mitzvah. <laughs> All right, this is your one opportunity to applaud. Otherwise, now we're not, now for the rest of the service, we're not going to applaud. Okay, so I'm going to teach you a word. Here you go. You right? Yasher? Koach. Very good. It means with great strength. He did a really great job. So he can go, you know, you can say Yasher Koach. You know, Yasher Koach. Good, good strength. He did a really great job. But it, this is worship. This is prayer. This is our opportunity to join in Shabbat morning services together. Um, so that's why we you know, turn off our phones, so we can disconnect from everything else in our world, so we can connect with one another, and so that we can also connect with ourselves, so we can connect with the divine. You know, how, whatever, whatever manner it is that you pray to find just some moments, most importantly of all, for yourself. So that's what's happening on this beautiful Shabbat morning. And we're going to walk you through also, because how many of you have never been to a synagogue before for a Shabbat service? All right, fantastic. Don't worry, I'm going to catch you up on everything um, in a little bit, so that way you know what's happening. But first, what we need to do is we need to warm ourselves up, warm up our voices. So Cantor Reinwald, will you please help us warm up our voices right now? We join in this song, which is called a nigun. This is a melody that has no specific words, so we can focus on how the music makes us feel as we sing on the syllables yelalai, as we warm up our mind, body, spirit, and voice. So please join in as we sing with a smile. <laughs> rhythm about you, Jack. It's amazing. I love it. Um, so today, you know, we celebrate not only Shabbat, this day of rest that God gives to us, but also as Jack is becoming a bar mitzvah. He is not having a bar mitzvah. He is becoming. It's a person. He is a, a bar, bar means son mitzvah of the commandments. So, um, you know, today you are helping your parents actually fulfill one of the three mitzvot 
that they made a promise to, made a promise to you when you were born. There you go. <laughs> One was to, um, to teach you Torah, to remind you to do acts of loving kindness, which you do very, very well, and the other is to bring him to chupa, to find the love of his life eventually, not anytime soon. Let's just deal with the Torah and the doing good deeds. Okay, perfect. So we're not going to marry him off too soon, I promise, Debbie. It's all good. <laughs> so with that, though, comes this responsibility as a young man to be able to share in um, leading us in worship, leading the congregation in worship. And so in order for him to do that, we're all going to be participating in this together. So I invite you to grab your prayer books, which are right in front of you there, or those of you in the front row, they're underneath your seats right there. So grab your prayer books. And Jack, I'm going to borrow yours, if I may, please. Thank you very much. Um, so your prayer books is called Mishkan Tefila, um, which uh, literally is the tabernacle of prayer. Um, this is the prayer book for the reform movement. There's different movements of Judaism. I'm not going to go all into that. But um, this prayer book is going to be our guide for being able to, um, you know, follow along in our worship. Now, gentlemen in the back, hello. All right, guys. So tell me uh, the prayer book. What do you guys notice about it that's different than any other book? Yes. Well, it's not different than any other book. Okay. Okay, exactly. So it's 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 uh, flipped on the back side. You open it backward. Yes. It's a left-handed person. It, uh, there you go. How many of us are left-handed? Yes. Awesome. All right. When you write in Hebrew, actually, it's awesome because, you know, for those of us who are left-handed, how many of you get ink spots on your on, right when you're writing? Yeah, that doesn't happen when you write in Hebrew because Hebrew goes from right to left instead of left to right. So when you open up your prayer books, open up anywhere in the middle of the prayer books. All right. Here, you can have your own copy, too. There you go. Um, there you go. There you are. All right, perfect. So you open up anywhere, and you guys see all the, all the Hebrew that's there on the page? So on the right-hand column are the Hebrew letters, right? All the Hebrew words there, all right, written in Hebrew. But there's a left-hand column that has transliteration. So the transliteration are the English letters um, that help us pronounce the Hebrew words. So you can follow along and be able to um, try to pronounce some of the Hebrew words because we recognize not everybody knows how to read Hebrew. So therefore, we have the transliteration there. So if you don't know how to read the Hebrew letters, you can read the transliteration. However, you ready for this? This is Jack's prayer book. It's a lot heavier. I'll tell you about that in a second. And his prayer book with the Hebrew does not have the transliteration. Ooh, ah, here we go. The, yes, <laughs> they're impressed. <laughs> All right. So, because Jack has been studying this for many years, so he is able to read the Hebrew directly from the prayer book. And the prayer book in here also has vowels with the prayers, which later on I'm going to show you a Torah scroll that doesn't have vowels. And I'll go into that later on. So, now, if you want to know what's being said, because we're not going to do everything in Hebrew and everything in English, because if we did that, that'd be really long. Um, so, when we do some of our prayers in Hebrew, if you want to know what's being said, underneath it is the English translation. All right? So you can follow along that way. Now, the other thing with the prayer book is, so Jack's prayer book is a bigger prayer book um, because he has the full prayer book. This, um, this prayer book has not only the services for Shabbat, but also for festivals um, you know, that we, uh, throughout the year, along with the weekday services. So therefore, because he has the full prayer book and you have only the Shabbat version in front of you, page numbers are a little bit different. At the bottom of all of your pages are um, two different, two sets of page numbers, one in black, one in blue. So when Jack calls out the page number that we're on, you're looking at the blue page numbers. That's going to correspond with his prayer book. So that way we can all be on the same page. But I'm bum I'm here all day. Okay, thank you. <laughs> all right. So there you go, my friend. Now, we're going to pray not only with the words that are in the prayer books, but we're also going to pray with singing. Uh, feel free to join along in the reading. Um, if you don't know the words, Lai Lai works very well. We're also going to pray with our bodies. So there's going to be times where we're going to invite you to stand. Um, and it's a way of our standing in respect before God, as well as bowing in humble reverence before God as well. So there's some choreography that happens too. 
And you know, really, we, that choreography kind of happens with the rhythm that is within our bodies. And we know Jack definitely feels that rhythm and that spirit because you know it's hard to stand totally still. It, it, it really is. And so it's wonderful to be able to feel that rhythm. So allow yourselves to feel that rhythm as well. And finally, we pray with what we wear. So we have the, t the kippah, the yarmulke, uh, the head covering that reminds us of God's presence all around us. And finally, the talit, the prayer shawl. So we are commanded to wear fringes on the corners of our garment. All these other fringes are just decorative. But the fringes on the corners of our garment are called tzitzit, okay? Now tzitzit are there to remind us when we look at them of the 613 commandments. There's not just 10 commandments, all right? We all go, go back to Cecil B. DeMille, right, and the 10 commandments. No, there's 613 actually in the Torah. And so when we look upon the tzitzit, we're reminded about them, but we're reminded especially that we're supposed to study them and we're supposed to talk about them, learn about them, wrestle with them. You know, what, why is this commandment this way? What does it really mean? What's the purpose behind it? And so forth. So we're, re we're reminded of that responsibility. When a young woman becomes a bat mitzvah, a daughter of the commandments, she receives her first talit. And so too, when a young man becomes a bar mitzvah, he receives his first talit. So, Jack, will you come and join me here at the Bima? And I'm going to invite forward your grandparents, parents, Artie and Les Melo, to come forward and present you with your first talit. I'm going to put your prayer book right here, my friend. Mm -hmm. Thank you. that the grandparents provide a bar and bar mitzvah with their first talit. To continue this, we had a wonderful lunch with you, a great afternoon taking out the orcaholic. It is something very special that you will have for your whole life. But for today's ceremony, we chose to wear our family talit that's been in our family for many, many years, and it carries on a great tradition and a great deal of meaning. So we're very proud that you chose to wear that today. According <coughs> to the Bible, God instructed the Jews to wear fringes on the corner of their garments to remind them of God's commandments. The talus was created as the garment to hold these fringes. Jack, you have chosen to become a bar mitzvah in our family talus. This talus could just be dismissed as a 60-year-old piece of silk, as it is just that, a piece of cloth. But for our family, it is so much more. It represents a connection to our faith in God, our Judaism, and to the prior generations of our family. Your great-great-grandmother gave this talus to me upon my becoming a bar mitzvah. I was married to your grandmother wearing it. Your dad and your uncles were wrapped in it at their brisses, and they became bar mitzvah wearing it. It was even used as a chuppah at your parents' wedding. You and your cousins were wrapped in it and were baby naming in brisses, and the older cousins wore it as they became bar mitzvah. And now, as the next oldest in this generation of Melos, you have chosen to continue the tradition to wear it. May we have the strength, uh, may God, pardon, may God continue to protect this family and allow it to grow. And may we have the strength of character to always remember who we are where we came from, and what responsibilities we have not only to our God and to our community, but to each and every member of our family. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kidshanu B'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu L'hotzeke V'asitzit. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, eternal soul of the universe, who makes us holy through the commandments and commands us to wear fringes on the corners of our garments.
We continue and we turn now to page 186 as we join together Modé Modá Ani, giving thanks for all of our blessings. And page 224, Amen. As we turn to page 226, and we rise now for Baruch Hu, our call to worship. Ya la 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 ya la la Ya la 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 Ya la 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 Ya la 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 Ya la 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 Ya Adonai Hamevora Ata Adonai, Elohinu, Melecha Olam, Yotzer or Uvare Hoshe, Ose Shalom Uvare Etako. Hameir la Aret Valarim, Aleha Barachamim, Uv Tuvo Mehadesh Beho Yom Tamid, Ma Save Reshit. Ma Rabu Ma Secha Adonai, Kolam Bahoch Ma Asita. Ma La Ha Aret Kinyanecha. Tit Barach Adonai Elohinu, Al Shava Ma Se Yadecha. Vayam me o re or she asita, ye far rucha sela. O kadash, asianta hihi, o kadash, asianta hihi, o kadash, asianta hihi, o kadash, asianta 
Please join me on page 231. Love your neighbor as yourself, you said. In light blinded we saw that inner and outer worlds are one, as you are one. You spoke and we wrote. We reached for you down the centuries, your light moving before us as we climbed, fell back, and climbed again, your Sinai of life. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Continue chanting together the Vea Hafta on page 234. Vea Hafta <laughs> Veshinantam levanecha, vedi barta bam, veshiv techa bevedecha, uvlech techa vadere, u shoch becha ukumecha, ukshar tam leod aliodecha, veha yuletotafot bene necha, uftav tam almezizot betecha. Uvi Sharecha Leman Tiskeru Vasi Temet Komit Botai Vitem Kedoshim Lalawechem Ani Adonai Lalawechem Asher Hotzeit Yetem Veret Mitzrayim Vihiot Lachem Lalohim Ani Adonai Elohechem, Nai Elohechem Emet. We continue on page 240, singing Mi Chamocha. Ya la 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 Shira 
Magir Gorlecha, Ule Neitzach Nitzachim Grushar Hanakish, Veshiv Chachalu Hinu, Mipinu Loyamush, Leolam Vaed, Baruch Ata Adunai, Hail Hakadosh. To all generations, we will declare your greatness, and for all eternity, proclaim your holiness. Your praise, O God, shall never depart from our lips. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. Baruch atah Adonai, ha'el ha'kadosh. We join together at the bottom of page 250 as we sing Vishamru. Vishamru, Vene Israel, Vet Hashabat, La Asotet Hashabat, Let We continue on page 252. <coughs> Elohenu velohe avotenu v'imotenu ritse bimnu chatenu. Kadshenu mitvotecha v'ten helkenu betoratecha. Sabenu mitu vecha v'shamchenu bishud atecha. V'tacher libenu leovdecha v'emet. V'han hilenu adonai Elohenu v'ahava uvratzon shabbat kodshecha. Vayanuhu va Yisrael, Mekadeshe Shemecha, Baruch Ata Adonai, Mekadesh Hashabbat. Amen. We continue on page 254. Retse Adonai Eloheinu, Beamcha Yisrael, Ut Filatam Beahava Tekadel, Uti la Ratson Tamid, Avodat Yisrael Amecha, El Karov Lecho Korav, Pene el avodecha veanuhu, Shifuch ruchacha alenu, Vetehezena anenu bishu vecha, Vitzion barachamim, Baruch ata adonai, Hamahasir shekin nanto litzion. Please join me on page 257. For the expanding grandeur of creation, worlds known and unknown, galaxies beyond galaxies filling us with awe and challenging our imaginations. Modim anach nulach. For this fragile planet Earth, its times and tides, its sunsets and seasons. Modim anach nulach. For the joy of human life, its wonders and surprises, its hopes and achievements. Modim anach nulach. For human community, our common past and future hope, our oneness transcending all separation, our capacity to work for peace and justice in the midst of hostility and oppression. Modim anach nulach. For high hopes and noble causes, for faith without fanaticism, for understanding of views not shared. Modim anach nulach. For all who have labored and suffered for a fairer world, 
who have lived so that others might live in dignity and freedom. Modim anach nulach. For human liberties and sacred rights, for opportunities to change and grow, to affirm and choose. Modim anach nulach. We pray that we may live, not by our fears, but by our hopes, not by our words, but by our deeds. Blessed are you, Adonai. Your name is goodness, and you are worthy of thanksgiving. Baruch ata Adonai. Hatov shimcha uacha na'e do'ot. As we continue on page 258 with Sim Shalom, please join along with us. And again, if you don't know the words, Lai Lai works very well. silent meditation. Shalom, Bim Roma. Oh, say Shalom, Bim Roma. Who ya say, who ya say, who ya say, Shalom. Who ya say, who ya say, who ya say, Shalom. Who ya say, who ya say, who ya I say shalom Alleluia 
May the one, may the one who makes peace bring peace down, bring peace down. And may the one, may the one who makes peace bring peace down, bring peace down. And may the one, may the one who makes peace bring peace down, bring peace down. And may the one, may the one who makes peace bring peace down, bring peace down. Oh, say shalom. Be him Roma. So we've reached this part of our service now called Seder Kriyat HaTorah. Seder, now we know that one because that word, because we actually just had a Seder not too long ago for Passover. It's the, it literally means order. So it's a special dinner that we have on Passover and we read from a Haggadah that tells the whole story about the exodus from Egypt. And, it's, and what we do is called a Seder because we're doing things in order. Well, Seder Kriyat HaTorah is the order for reading Torah. So first of all, let's start with what Torah is. Torah is the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. All of them contained within a scroll. The scroll is called a Torah scroll. And so throughout an entire year, we read in order from the very beginning, Bereshit in Genesis, all the way to the end of Deuteronomy, we read a portion every single week so that we take an entire year to read the Torah scroll. So we read it in order. That's where the Seder part comes in. The reading of Torah, though, is something that you know we work up toward, is something that we learn how to do, and we learn how to do it on a number of different levels. First of all, we have to learn how to read the words themselves, right? Yeah, exactly. So, which is exactly what you've been doing, Jack. Now, as we pointed out a moment ago in your prayer books, with your Hebrew, there's a little dots and dashes that are below the letters or next to the letters or on top of the letters. Those are the vowels. Originally, Hebrew was not written with vowels. So that's because, you know, if I was to go ahead and give you all something to read in English without any vowels, you would know how to read it because you know the language. But at a certain time in our history, when we were dispersed and we went in all different directions and started speaking many different languages, then, well, we started to lose, unfortunately, our Hebrew. And so when we don't have the vowels, we can start to change the words. And if you change the words by changing the vowels, you change the meaning. So the rabbis created this system of vowels to make sure that we were reading the correct words. But Torah must be written down the exact same way, from generation to generation to generation. So a Torah scroll is passed on from generation to generation, and you cannot change anything in it, which means you can't add the vowels to it. You can't add the punctuation to it uh, uh, as well. So now Jack has been learning not only how to read Hebrew for the prayer book, but also to read from the Torah scroll. But we also always make sure that we have next to us the pointed text with the vowels and so forth to make sure that we read it correctly. Okay, so that's the technical part of it. That's, that's the easy part. But then the question is, Torah itself has been around for many, many generations, over 2,000 years, if not longer. In fact, Jewish text is over 3,000 years. So we have an important question to ask. What do we do with a text that's over... 3,000 years old. What kind of meaning does it have for us in our lives today? Is it relevant? And the answer is yes, exactly. It is relevant. But the reason why it's relevant is because even though we were, we we're going to read it 
word for word, letter for letter, the way that it's been read from generation to generation, what makes it relevant is how we understand it, how we interpret it. Because the fact is that many of the rules, many of the laws that we're going to be reading in our Torah portion, especially because we're in the book of Leviticus, right? The book of Leviticus is pretty challenging. It's a whole law book. This is how you're going to do this. Here's how you can do the sacrifices. Here's how you can make these offerings. And, well, we don't do sacrifices anymore. I like a good barbecue, but we're not doing uh, a sacrifice, right, Got, right Jack? Yeah. yeah. We'll go out for barbecue later. Yeah, okay. So, but we don't do sacrifices anymore. Rather, we offer our prayers to God. We have a personal relationship with God. So what do I do with a text that talks about worshiping God through sacrifices. How do I understand that? How do I interpret that? How do I find meaning in that for my life today, for our lives today, over 2,000 years later? That is not my job today. That is the job of our bar mitzvah. That is, surprised? <laughs> Phew. <laughs> like, we worked on this. <laughs> I love it when he plays with me. <laughs> Jack today is not only a student of Torah, we are all always students of Torah. Today though, Jack is our teacher. Jack has been studying this Torah portion called Shmini from the book of Leviticus for a long time now. And we have first on the surface level, we read it, we read the translation of it, and then he started to ponder it and ask what does it have, what does it mean for him and for us today. So later on in our service, Jack is going to teach us what this Torah portion of Shmini can mean for each of us and what we can carry with us today and forward. So with that, we're going to begin our Seder Kriyat HaTorah, our service for reading of Torah, as we turn to page 362 in our prayer books, and we join together. In Kamocha Vailohim Adonai, Vain Kimma Secha, Mahutiha Mahut, Holamim, Umem Shaltiha Behodor Vador. Adonai Melek, Adonai Malak, Adonai Him Lok, Melam. Adunai oz la moitein, Adunai varech et ammo vashalom. So throughout our Torah service today, we're going to have a number of family members who are going to be participating with us and sharing in this wonderful, joyous moment of Torah. So I'd like to invite first, we're passing Torah from generation to generation, Les and Artie Nalo. If you will come and join Debbie and Aaron along with Jack, you guys will stand right here in front of our bima. I want to acknowledge... Um, that uh, they'll stay down at their seats for the moment. So we're going to have Les and Artie come right over here to my right. There we go. And then Debbie and Aaron. Perfect. I'd like to uh, acknowledge Maddie and Sam and Asher Malo. You guys are going to be holding the Torah cover and the binder, but not yet. Don't worry. You guys stay right there. And to open our ARC doors, it is my honor to call forward Chet. Ch excuse me, Chuck and Rose Panetta and Audrey Panetta to please come forward to open our ARC doors at this time. Mm -hmm. Come on up, absolutely. And we invite everyone to please rise as we continue in the middle of page 362. <laughs> In the 
this scroll is the secret of our people's life from Sinai until now. Its teaching is love and justice, goodness and hope. Freedom is its gift to all who treasure it. Page 366. Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Lamo Israel Bikedushato Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai It is this gift of Torah that is the responsibility of all of us. In a moment, we are going to march through this congregation with this Torah scroll, and you might notice people who will reach out with their prayer books or their talitot to kiss it. It's not that we worship Torah. We don't worship this. Rather, we honor it. We show respect to it. And as we march through the congregation, we are reminded that it belongs to each and every one of us. Well, Les and Artie, the two of you have been the bearers of Torah. You have embraced it, and you have been teachers of this wonderful gift. Giving it now here to Debbie, to you, and to Aaron. As mom and dad, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, remember when you got this little, little boy? Yeah. Still, scarred. Still scarred, I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, you know what? Today, you get to pass on this wonderful <laughs> gift to your son. <laughs> so here you go. So Jack, here you go. It is yours. This belongs to you, my friend. May you always embrace it and hold tight to it. May its weight continue to keep you grounded, but also may it lift you up, always inspiring you as you inspire us and we, as we walk now in the light of Torah. Lecha Adonai ha-gidula ve-ha-gevura ve-ha-tiferet ve-ha-netzach ve-ha-ha-on ki-hol ba-shamayim u-ba-a-aret ki-hol ba-shamayim u-ba-a-aret lecha Adonai Amam lachav ve'amit naseh lechol erosh Ashlosha devarim Ashlosha devarim Ashlosha Ashlosha devarim Ha'olam Ha'olam Omed Ashlosha devarim Ashlosha devarim Ashlosha Shlosha devarim Ha'olam Ha'olam Omed Al ha-Torah Ve'al ha-Avodam Ve'al gemilut chasadim Al ha-Torah Ve'al ha-Avodam Ve'al gemilut chasadim Ashlosha divarim Ashlosha divarim Al shlosha shlosha devarim haolam haolam omed. Al shlosha devarim. Al shlosha devarim. Al shlosha shlosha devarim haolam haolam omed. Al ha-Torah ve'al ha-Avodah ve'al gimilut chasadim Al 
<laughs> so before you are seated, if you are, oh, good. <laughs> That's much important. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> you are more than welcome. If you want to come forward and see a Torah up close and personal, come on up. You are welcome to. If you don't want to, you can be seated, um, but feel free to come on up. All right. You. I know. You guys know where you go. There you go. Back there. <laughs> Hi. Shabbat Shalom. All right, come on up. There you are. It's a Torah. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, hang on one second. All right. Come up, come around. Come this way. There you go. I don't bite hard. <laughs> and if you want to lean on here, you're welcome to. You okay? Okay. All right. Or you can lean right over here, wherever works. All right. Perfect. And the rest of you are welcome to be seated if you like. Oh, absolutely. So, come on, guys. Come on. Come on. There you go. Perfect. All right. So, the Torah scroll. It's a scroll. So, therefore, it means that, you know, we've got to keep it bound together. Um, so, this is what Maddie's going to hold in just a second. Well, with all of our B'nai Mitzvah students, we go on a retreat, and we um, and what we do is we make our Torah binders, and they make a Torah binder that then is um, used to bind the Torah when they become Bar Bat Mitzvah. And also, you know, Jack, any time that you come back to read Torah, bring this with, and we will use it. So this is Jack's Torah binder that he created. There you go. Ooh, ah. There we go. Not bad. You know, see, there's no show everybody over there. Excellent. Perfect. All right. So, do you want to? We, Rosalie, do you guys want to? We can. Make a Torah binder for adult on out mitzvah? Done. <laughs> Cantor, we got a project. <laughs> I have good hearing. <laughs> I saw the eyes. We have our Benot Mitzvah students. So the cool thing, Jack, is that you can become, you become Bar Bat Mitzvah when you turn 13, but you celebrate it um, usually when you turn 13, but there's times that you celebrate it also later on in life. And we have three out of our four Benot Mitzvah who um, are going to become uh, Benot Mitzvah in, uh, in June. So we're really excited, Janet and Rosalie and Sharon. We're excited for you guys. They're taking notes furiously back there. It's awesome. So you guys are doing great. All right. So Torah scroll. All right. This is the Torah scroll. So come on closer. So that way, you, will you come hold that for me? I promise it won't. Nothing will happen. There you go. Got it? Awesome. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, come on in. So the Torah scroll is handwritten by a scribe. All right, a scribe, a sofer, is going to sit down. Ashley, you want to come closer you, where you can see? Go for it, kiddo. There you are. You can go right up there. All right, so a scribe is going to handwrite a Torah scroll. You cannot do this via a computer printer. You need to go ahead and you need to handwrite it with a quill and a feather, a quill, which is a feather, um, and then on parchment. Now, parchment comes from the skin of a kosher animal. So, all right, B'nai Mitzvah students, kosher animal, what does it need? Two things. Go for it, yes. Split hooves and chew its cud. I, yeah, you did, I know. You rock it. All right, so that's a kosher animal. So Asher, what would be an example of a kosher animal? So. What kind of animal is kosher? So a cow and a giraffe. A cow is kosher. A giraffe? Oh, I thought that th those are hoofs. I thought those were toes. I guess maybe those. Huh? I have to think about that one. <laughs> yeah? My teacher looked it up. Oh, your teacher looked it up. I'm going with him. 
I am going with the kid. All right, we're gonna go with it. But you're right, they don't have an idea how to shochet the thing because it's got a really long neck. So good point, Asher. <laughs> yeah, Asher one, Rabbi nothing. Go for it, ready? <laughs> wow. Okay, so, <laughs> I love it. Um, so, they then make the ink from um, all natural ingredients, from gall nuts, which um, is done by a wasp in a tree, um, and then also other um, berries, other natural ingredients that are cooled and boiled and boiled and cooled and cooled and boiled and takes a year to make the ink, to make sure that it's indelible, to make sure that it is permanent because you want a Torah scroll to last for a very, very long time. This is our newest Torah scroll. This Torah scroll is about um, 14 years old, but we have Torah scrolls that are over 100 years old and we have one Torah scroll that we're in the process of actually repairing and, um, and fixing, which is the Czech Torah scroll from the Czech Republic that is 300 years old. And so if you take very good care of your Torah scroll, then it can last for a very, very long time. One of the ways that we take very good care of it is that when we're following along, because as those of you who are up close can see, the lines, you know, there's a lot of lines of Torah that are there. And so in order to follow along so we can kind of keep our place, we have to use, exactly, what's that called, Asher? There you go, yad, which means hand, quite appropriate. Because, Asher, will you show them over there too what that one looks like? And I'll go over here. You show them over there. I'll show them over here. Here you go. It looks like a hand. It's a finger. It's pointing. Yeah. Oh, you know that. <laughs> All right. So that way we can follow along with our yad on the Torah scroll and not using our fingers because the oil in our fingers, when it mixes then with the ink, will eventually break down the ink. And we want this to last as long as we possibly can. Now, a, a scribe has to write it down exactly the same way. If a scribe makes a mistake, then he or she needs to go ahead and scrape off the letter to be able to repair it. However, if the scribe is not able to repair the letter, to fix it, then what must they do? Yes, Jack. Start fresh. Start fresh, exactly. Thankfully, not the entire Torah, just that panel, okay? So the, the Torah scroll is made up of panels. Um, each panel has between four and five columns to it. Um, so this, uh, the scribe goes ahead and writes it letter for letter, word for word. And also the last ingredient, by the way, in the ink, anybody remember what it is? Yes? Honey, Honey why? Yeah, Torah, the words of Torah should be sweet as honey, sweet as honey, sweet as honey on our tongue. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yes. All right. So you do remember. <laughs> it also gives it a beautiful shine to it. Finally, um, there's something really, really cool. Okay, what's your name? Delaney. Delaney? Nice to meet you, Delaney. Okay, here's what we're going to do. You ready for this? You're not going to have to read anything. I just want you to look at something. You're good. All right. Now, if you look really closely, the Torah, there are lines that are etched into the, partment, uh, the parchment going this way, right? And they're also going this way in order to keep everything justified and straight. Because I don't know about you guys, if I write without lines, I'm in trouble. All right, so Delaney, looking at the letters, can you see the lines? Are the letters sitting on the line or hanging from the line? Can you see the letters there? Are they hanging from it or are they sitting on it? Yeah, they're hanging. Good job. They are hanging from the lines. Think about it. Could you imagine writing English, you know, hanging your letters from the tops of the lines? That's how actually the scribes write the Torah scroll. And there's a beautiful midrash, a story, that says that that line is representative of the division between heaven and earth. And that the, the letters are actually all of us. And that we are always striving to reach higher and to be more holy, to be more special. And so that's why the letters hang from the line. So there you go. Any questions? No? We got it? All right. Who wants to read first? I'm kidding. <laughs> you would? Perfect. Okay, me, you, okay, we got it. You're going to read that? <laughs> All right. Well, with that, my friends, I say thank you very much. You may go back down to your seats. Thank you very much. You're gonna, will you hold on to that for me? Because we're going to use this one up here. Thanks, Asher. All right. Asher, I love a giraffe. I'm going to have to check that one out. <laughs> That's cool. It was on the smart board? That works. <laughs>
It is, he is smart, it's awesome. All right, yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, so for our first Aliyah, Cantor. Our first Aliyah, the blessing will be chanted by Les Melo, Ishmael Shmuel Ben Abraham, and Ardi Melo, Leah Bat Menachem Visara. Rabbi will be reading from Torah and reading the English translation, Lenny Melo, Laser Mendel Ben Ishmael Shmuel de Leah. Ya'am du laliyah harishona. Oh, Maddie. Maddie, here you go. <laughs> I forgot to give this to you. I'm so sorry. All right, come on over here. Les, if you'll go ahead and take your CC to the first word, Vita Bear. Thank you. Baruch Baruch Amen. Vaida bear Adonai, a moshevel a haron, lay more, lay more, a lehem. Dabru, Albane Israel, lay more, Zod, hahaya, a sher, tochlu, tochelu, me call, habema, a sher, al haaretz, call. Mafars mafres et parsa vishosa at shesa vishosa at shesa parsot maalat maalat gera babhema ataha otaha tochelu. And Adonai spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying to them, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, These are the creatures that you may eat from among all land animals, any animals that have true hoofs, with clefts through the hoofs, and that chew the cud. Any such animals you may eat. All right, you will go ahead and take your seat, sweet. Here we go. <laughs> Amen. For our second Aliyah, chanting the blessing, Mark Melo, Moshe David, Ben Ishmael Shmuel, Delea, and Sandy Melo, Hannah Bat Avraham, Visara. Reading the English translation, Rachel Melo, Aviva Hindi, Bat Moshe David, Vichana. Ya Amdul, Aliyah Hashenit. Who et Adonai Hamvarach, Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Ba'ed, Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Ba'ed, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Harlam, Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'amin, Bena Tanlanu et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Et zetochlu mi kol asher b'mayim, kol asher lo sinapir v'kas keset b'mayim, b'yamim uvan nechalim otam tochelu 
בכל אשר אין לו צל הפיר וקשקשת בימים ובנחלים מכל שארץ המים ומכל נפש החיה אשר במים שקט הם לכם ושקט יהיו לכם מבשרם לא תאכלו ואת נבלתם תשקצו כל אשר אין לו צנע פיל וקשקשת במים שקט הוא לכם. These you may eat of all that live in water, whatever has fins and scales in the water, in the seas and in the rivers. These you may eat, but as for anything that does not have fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that moves in the water, of anything that lives in the water, they shall be an abomination for you. Indeed, they shall be an abomination for you. You shall not eat of their flesh, and even their carcasses shall be an abomination for you. Everything in the water that has no fins nor scales shall be an abomination for you. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher natan lanu Torah emet, v'chaye olam nata b'tochenu, Baruch atah Adonai, noten ha'torah. Amen. For our third Aliyah, chanting the blessing, Debbie Melo, Devorah Bat Abraham Bissara, and reading the English translation, Aaron Melo, Yosef Aharon, Ben Ishmael, Shmuel, Vilea. Ia Amdu, Laliyah Hashlishit. Amen. <laughs> Et kol orev limino, ve et bat haya anaha, ve et hatachmas, ve et hashachach, ve et anet liminehu, ve et hakos, ve et hashalach, ve et, ve et hayan shuhu, ve et hatin shemet, ve et hakaat, ve et harachaham, ve et hachasidah, hanafah, למינה ואת הדחיפת ואת הטלף. English is kind of my specialty. <laughs> And for these among the birds you shall have abomination. They may not be eaten for they are an abomination. The eagle, the vulture, and the black vulture, the kite, and falcons of all kind. Every kind of raven, the ostrich, the night hawk, and the seagull, hawks of all kind, and the little owl, the cormorant, and the great owl, the white owl, the pelican, and the bustard, the stork, herons of all kind, the hoopoe, and the bat. ב 
Aruhata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet Vahaye Olam Nata Betohinu Baruchata Adonai Notain Hatorah Amen. Oh, wait, wait, Debbie, 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 Debbie. Get back Get the here. front row view. I promise. Oh, this is, no, 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 no. This is really cool. You want to see this. Here, in fact, here, scooch this way just a little bit. That way you have a good view. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. Cantor. Ya'amod habachur habar mitzvah Abraham Yonatan ben Yosef Aharon Udivora l'alia ha-torah. Who at an eye humper Baruch had an eye humper rockly lumber Baruch had an eye humper rockly lumber Baruch had an eye, Elohenu Melacholam, Asher Bahar Banu Miko Halmim, Vena Tanlanu et Torato, Baruch had an eye, no ten hotora. Ani Adonai Hama Alet Hem Meret Mitzrayim Lihiot Lahem Lelohim Vihitem Kedoshim Kikadosh Ani Sot Torah Habehema Vechaof Vechon Nefesh Hahaya Haromaset Bamayim Uchonefesh Hashoretet Al Haaret Vehavdil Vein Hatamay Uvein Hatamo Uvein Hahaya Hane Echelet Uvein Hahaya Asher Loteachel For I, Adonai, am the one who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall be holy, for I am holy. These are the instructions concerning animals, birds, all living things that move in water, and all creatures that swarm on earth, for distinguishing between the unclean and, and the clean, between the living things that may be eaten and the living things that may not be eaten. Baruch atarnai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu torat emet, vehaye olam nata betuhenu, baruch atarnai, noten hatorah. Amen. Yasher koach mazel tov. Yes, you did. Now give them a big hug. Give your parents, turn around, turn around. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Mazel tov. Yeah, we'll let mom and dad go back down there. You can stay here with us. And I'd like to invite forward. Um, so Maddie, Sam, and Asher, if you guys will bring up the binder, exactly, the cover and the yod. And then Ben, bring it up here, Asher. Oh, you're going to come up the, oh, go for it. Come up the ramp. You got it. And then Ben, you are our Torah holder. So my friend, if you will come uh, over here and uh, and have a seat right there and as he is getting into place we also take a moment to offer blessings for healing as we have Torah here before us we take this moment asking God to bring healing to all of those who are in need of healing be it friends be it family those within the community, those who we know and those who we don't, those throughout our world who are in need of healing of mind, body, and spirit. May the Blessed Holy One be filled with compassion for everyone's health, 
to be restored, their strength to be revived. May God swiftly send them a complete renewal of body and spirit, and let us say, Amen. As we now turn and we, re uh, we lift up our Torah, we give honor to our Torah, Vezot HaBracha, and so I invite you to please, Vezot HaTorah, I invite you to please rise. Vizot HaTorah Asher Samosher Lipnei Venei Yisrael Vapi Adonai Biyan Moshe Yalalalayla 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 Yalalalay Yalalalay Yalalalalay Yalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalal
Melech HaOlam, Sur Kol HaLolamim, Sadiq V'chohad Arot, HaEl HaNeeman, HaMer V'Rose, HaMdaber UMKAYEM, SheKol DeVara V'Emet V'Tzedek, Al HaTorah, Ve'al HaVodah, Ve'al HaNviyim, Ve'al Yom HaShabbat HaZeh, Shenan Tatan Lanu, Adonai Eloheinu, Liktu Shav Elanim Nuchal Deavod, Ultifaret, Al HaKoho, Adonai Eloheinu, Anachnu Modim Lach, Umvarhim Otach, Yit Barach Shimcha, Befi Kohai Tamid Leolam Vaed, Baruch Ata Adonai, Mekadesh HaShabbat Amen Yasher Koach That was with a lot of amazing strength Yeah, yeah I almost ran out of breath Da 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 Wonderful, Jack So now we continue with our re- service and our returning our Torah to the Ark as we turn now to page 374, and we invite everyone to please rise. If you'll come open your doors with us, too. Lachem, Torati, Alta Zovu, Etraim, Hilama, Hazikimba, Vetom, Heha, Meushar, Deha, Heha, Darkenoam, Vehoneti, Voteha, Shalom. Hashivenu Adonai Elecha v'nashubam Chadesh, Chadesh yameinu Chadesh yameinu Yeah, totally. <laughs> so here you are. Ready? This, this week's Torah portion has everything you'd want. Sacrifice, fire, blood, slaughter, and death are all part of Shemini. And the story is essentially this. Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, overhear Moses telling Aaron how to make certain sacrifices to God. They include four very specific types of offerings, the sin offering, the burnt offering, the meal offering, and the well-being offering. But Nadab and Abihu were a bit overzealous and wanted a piece of the action. So they decided to make their own sacrifices. Unfortunately for them, that was not what God had instructed. So when Aaron's sons made their own offerings, they had to be punished. And Shmini tells us that as punishment for not following the rules, God incinerated them in a fiery death. That's harsh, I know. And today, this just would not fly. First, we no longer offer sacrifices in Judaism. That ended almost 2,000 years ago when the Roman Empire destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. In 2018 in Orange County and throughout the world, we can be Jewish and not face certain death by practicing Judaism in more modern ways. At the time of Nadab and Abihu, being Jewish meant that you could only honor God by following every rule, every time, without exception. 
Nadav and Abihi were just the first ones to mess up. As Reformed Jews today, we can each do Jewish in our own way, and we can do it without fear of divine retribution. While Orthodox Jews follow every rule to the letter, Reformed Jews like us enjoy the freedom of being Jewish in our own ways. We each get to choose how we do Jewish. However, we still have to know what the rules are, and it helps if we actually experience them. But after we do that, we are free to make a personal choice about those rules. For example, this week's Torah portion describes the rules of keeping kosher, telling us what food is permitted and not permitted. I actually experienced this this year with my seventh grade B'nai Mitzvah class. Rabbi gave us a challenge to eat kosher for a week. It was quite hard, but a great experience. And without it, I wouldn't have come to realize that keeping kosher is not something that's uh, necessary for me to do Jewish my way. We each have to wrestle with Torah as we try to work Judaism into our daily lives. Even within this congregation, we all do Judaism in our own way. And today, as I stand here before you, I want to, wait. And today, as I become a bar mitzvah, I get to make those choices for myself. So today, as I stand here b before you, I want to take a few minutes to tell you what being Jewish means to me and how I make Judaism part of my life. Let's start with the easy stuff. I'm not making burnt offerings anytime soon. I'm fine doing homework on Saturdays, and I really like cheeseburgers. And even though I take these positions, I still consider myself Jewish, and I'm pretty sure that God isn't going to incinerate me. Right? <laughs> so, so, so how does Jew being Jewish affect my daily life? Well, first, I go to the temple. Maybe not as much as I should, and certainly not as much as the rabbi would like. <coughs> but I go. I'm in seventh grade now, and that means while I don't go to religious school on Sundays anymore, I still come on Tuesdays, and next year I get to participate in the high school program here at TBS. I also participate in the Purim spiel, like I have for the past five years, and serve as a role model for others. History is written by the people who show up, and I want to be one of those people. So I come to Temple. This past summer, I had the, experience, the chance to go to Ginling Hilltop Camp <laughs> in Malibu. Thanks, guys. Where I got to experience Jewish life 24-7. We ate kosher, sang blessings before and after every meal, and wore white on Shabbat. And I love doing so. But now that I'm home, saying literally every prayer before eating just isn't something I do by myself. That doesn't mean it's not right for other people. Hey, it might be part of how they do Jewish. But for me, it's just not going to happen. But let me tell you what is happening for me. I recently went to go buy a tallit with my grandparents. It's, that's part of how my family do Jewish. Uh, grandma and grandpa take each grandkid to buy their first tallit when they're becoming bar or bat mitzvah. But this time with me, while we were shopping, I saw a beautiful mezuzah and asked for it so that I could post it on my bedroom door. Every day now, when I go downstairs for breakfast, I see the mezuzah that my grandparents bought me, and it makes me think about being part of a family and how I fit within the Jewish tradition. It might not be what everyone else does, but it has now become part of how I do Jewish. I'm a bar mitzvah. Pretty obvious by now. But by becoming a bar mitzvah, I'm following in the footsteps of my ancestors. My grandpa did this. My dad did this. My uncles did this. And my cousins did this. And now it's my turn. To me, Judaism gives me a place in the world and allows me to be part of something greater than myself. And while I'm doing my own thing, I'm also part of my family's tradition. I just told you about the talit my grandparents bought me, but I'm not wearing that talit today. Instead, I'm wearing the talit that my grandfather wore when he became bar mitzvah, that my father and uncles wore, and that my cousins wore. It's part of how my family does Jewish, and I'm proud to be part of that tradition. I also observe holidays. Not every one of them, but I try to hit the big ones. I don't eat leavened products and bread during Pesach. I fast during Yom Kippur, and I don't go to school on high holy days, no matter the makeup work. I do these things because I'm part of a larger secular world, and I want to let people know that I am Jewish. It's not exactly Sandy Koufax skipping a World Series game, but it works for me. I also de do mitzvot almost daily. My mitzvah project is one of those mitzvot. Last year, I signed up for a community service program where I met with the Grandma's House of Hope for the first time. This fantastic foundation helps homeless women and children in Orange County. I volunteer at the warehouse organizing food and supplies for women and children. 
I even built a bunk bed with my squad of volunteers. But now I ask you for your help. Please put your donations in the box outside the sanctuary when you leave this morning. That would really help. So that's how I do Jewish, and I hope that you'll think about how you do Jewish or how you do whatever faith you practice. We don't all need to make the same choices. We don't all need to do Jewish the same ways. That's kind of the whole point. The important thing is that we all think about what being Jewish means for us, and that process is what makes our religion such a perfect fit for me. Thank you. Oh, and I almost forgot. There's a bunch of people I need to thank for helping me to make this possible. First, I would like to thank Rabbi Cohen and Cantor Reinwald. You two have helped me so much to get me to this point. I couldn't have done it without you guys. Next, I would like to thank my, my mom and dad. My mom and dad have done literally everything in their power to make sure that I don't fail at this thing. <laughs> and I should thank my dad for the occasional potch to get me back to work. <laughs> and next, I would like to thank my sister. Even though she puts me over the edge, into the water, and deep into the ocean, I still love her very, very much. And thanks to all of you for slapping out here for a multi-hour service. I know it can be a bit painful. I love you all. Thanks for being part of my bar mitzvah celebration. changed a bit since you were little. You're just a little smarter, a little taller, but you're the same person with great character, sense of justice, and general joie de vivre. Just yesterday, you were out here on the Bima at the consecration service starting your religious school journey. It was there on those stairs where you were snapping your fingers and waving to the audience in junior choir out <laughs> outside in the rotunda for your first Purim spiel, Frozen, followed by Star Jews, The Force Awake Farce Awakens, Hamiltoshin, and Esther Potter. And here you are becoming a bar mitzvah. You've definitely been involved here over the years, and you may, may you continue to be involved, not just here at TBS, but everywhere. May you make a difference. May you be patient and understanding. May you be forgiving. And as you make your way through life, remember <laughs> that all you really need to know you learned in kindergarten. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess. And I've totally forgotten the rest of the second page on my <laughs> Clean up your own mess. <laughs> Don't take things that aren't yours. Say sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat. Live a balanced life. Learn some, drink some, draw some, paint some, sing and dance and play and work every day some. Be aware of wonder. Remember the little seed in the styrofoam cup. The roots go down, the plants go up, and no one really knows how or why, but we're all like that. Goldfish and hamsters, white mice, and even that little seed in the styrofoam cup, they all die. So do we. And when you go out into the world, watch out for traffic. Hold hands and stick together. Mazel tov, check. I'm so proud of you. Oh, I'm like my old man, I'm going to cry. Uh, not getting my shit together. Um, so this morning when I was with Jackie, he, uh, he asked me, if I, I had my speech ready to go because he was working on his and I told him no, I don't need to write a speech to, to do this. <sighs> Wish I should have, it would have been easier. Um, <laughs> but um, for every, Jesus, for everybody in this room, uh, you should realize that this isn't some client development event. This isn't some bar association grip and greet. Everybody that's here, Jack chose you to be here. There, there's a couple other people that 
are part of my family, effectively, and my mom said we had to invite them. So it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm, it, it's great having you guys, and they've been here from my bar mitzvahs, and Marky's bar mitzvah, and Lenny's bar mitzvah, and, and Jackie didn't pick them, I gotta be honest, but, <laughs> but, but, but everybody else that's here is somebody that, I, we sat down, I didn't do it, Deb did it, sat down with Jack and said, who do you love? Who do you care about? Who do you want to be here? God, you're so good. But um, I love you, man. You are so good. I, you know, I, 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 I thought about thinking about this and I didn't, but um, I just, like, I guess you're supposed to tell you what you should do. And I got nothing to say, man. You are perfect. You are fucking perfect. I love you, man. Like, honestly, yeah, I know. I know. I, I am not perfect. You are perfect. But you just, you just hit it, hit it out of the park, man. I, 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 I watched this thing, and I am so proud of you. And I love you in this way that, that, that you won't understand until you have your own son and you see him do this. And it's, it's just unbelievable, man. I, I can't even, I wish I could tell you what it's like. I can't. And a formal apology to all the little kids in the room. Yeah. <laughs> We apologize. <laughs> I don't have a five second delay. <laughs> oh, sorry. We'll do it in post production. Evan, can you help me with that later? Okay, cool. You got me. All right. <laughs> so, um, Jack, you know, you, you, uh, you become bar mitzvah here amongst your family and your friends and your community as well. So here at Temple Beth Shalom, where, yes, you have been here since day one, and what a true blessing it is. So I want to invite forward to help us make some presentations on behalf of the congregation, on behalf of representing your friends and the youth group, the youth of Temple Beth Shalom, Josh Mallers and Evan Nowak. So if you guys will come up, along with and Sarah, if you'll come and join me as well, as we are going to be able to present on behalf of Sisterhood and Brotherhood and our Board of Directors. Um, so here you go, gentlemen. There you go. The mic is yours, I think. <laughs> okay. Yes, you are. Um, <clears throat> wow. Congratulations, Jack. I am um, <laughs> so proud of you. I'm sorry I was not prepared, but I'll, I'm going to wing it. <laughs> And I have known you for since like first grade, and it has been a pleasure being a part of you along this journey, being your friend for so long. I've seen you grow up. We've done so many things together, and it's just been a, a blessing to be such an amazing friend with you, Jack. You have taught me a lot about myself, and I've learned a lot about you, and I hope we can be friends for much longer, and I love to see where how, where you go in your life. I'm proud of you. Mazel tov. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't mess up. Hey, okay. <laughs> Jack, I've known you for uh, two years. I've, you've done a, you've been a great friend helped me through some hard places in my life and brightened up the darker ones. And all the times I've hung out with you, you're always just so just happy. Like, just happy. Always got a smile on your face and you always seem to know exactly what's wrong and know exactly how to get it right. 
So, on behalf of the TBS youth group, I pre present you with this Havdalah candle. And it smells like Havdalah. Me. Yes. There we go. Okay. Hi, Jack. How are you? Hi, guys. Shabbat Shalom. You did an outstanding job today. I am so proud of you. I know your family is proud of you. We're all proud of you. You know, I know you for way back when, and you haven't really changed that much. You just got so much told. Okay. But uh, keep up the sense of humor that you have. Always saying hi. Okay because I know you're blessed with intelligence, with a sparkling sense of humor, you're friendly, and um, I think you should change. You should keep those wonderful qualities with you, okay? And um, you know, today is a special day, not only for your family and yourself, but for the rest of us, your Temple Beth Shalom family. So I represent sisterhood, and we are so proud. We're the ladies of the sisterhood. Every time I come up here and I, I present <coughs> this present to the young men and women, um, because you know today you're entering the, uh, you know, an, an exclusive brotherhood, okay, of young men. I am delighted to do it, okay? So today is a day of blessings and good wishes. And my blessing for you for the future for you is good health, happiness, prosperity, and shalom. And I hope that, with, I know you're going to go far. I know you're going to, to go, um, your academic career is not over yet. And I do hope that your Jewish education is not over. This is just a chapter. Today is the end of this glorious chapter. And then you're going to continue with um, confirmation and, um, and other things. So with the ladies of the sisterhood, we'd like to present you with a Kiddush cup, a very special present, and I hope you use it in good health in the years to come. And uh, take it with you now at home and use it every Shabbat and the, high and the holidays. <coughs> and then after that, when you go to college, you take it there. And when you go to graduate school, you take it with you. <laughs> and after that, take it to your home when you get married, in this order. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Mazel tov. <laughs> Mazel tov. Thank you, sir. Yes, and also, um, because you, you said you know, he's part of a brotherhood as yes, well. Yes, a brotherhood, and, yes. And so um, if you will present yes. for him also his gift from the brotherhood right. too, Sarah. Yes. I am honored to present you this gift from brotherhood. It is a tzedaka box, okay? It's a charity box. And you know what to do with this. You put here some coins and a little money. And this is distributed. You can use it for your favorite, favorite charity, OK? This is from the Brotherhood. Mazel tov again. <laughs> OK, thank you. thank you. And of course, Jack, the, uh, the gift from our board of directors you have been using um, all throughout the service has been your prayer book. Um, and so may you continue to use this always and finding wonderful words of inspiration within it today and always and of course there's your certificate of becoming a bar mitzvah it's not a driver's license not a car you, but you can drive torah with it hey, okay. there, there you but go whatever i can drive Okay, it's good. Okay, perfect. And also there is a um, gift certificate from NIFTI, the North American Federation of Temple Youth, that will help you get to Israel so that you can visit your final gift, which is that a tree has been planted in your honor uh, by Cantor Reinwald and myself. And Ari saw the forest uh, last week, um, so we, check, we checked it out, right? It's all, it's, it's all there. And uh, so your tree has been planted in your honor, and, but you do need to get to Israel because you need to water it. And your watering day happens to be? Thursday. There you go, perfect, excellent. So with that, we are very, very proud of you. And there are so many blessings in our lives. In fact, everybody has an opportunity to bless. And I invite you throughout the day, take a moment. Offer Jack your blessings um, and those wonderful thoughts and prayers for him for today and for always and for the years ahead. But at this moment, it is my honor to invite your parents to come and to join Cantor Reinwald and myself at the Ark as we get to bestow upon you our blessings. So if everyone will please rise.
lightning didn't come down. Yes. yes. <laughs> Promised you. Okay. Yeah. You know, yes, it is interesting that in this week's parasha, in the Daven of Ihu, they were. They were consumed by fire. And unfortunately, though, they weren't given the rules beforehand. The rules came afterward, after they're being consumed. And I'm like, that's just not fair. <laughs> What's up with that? But, you know, Jack, life is not always about the strict rules, as you so beautifully taught us. Life isn't just about following things to the letter of the law. Please forgive me, lawyers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but it's also the spirit, the spirit of the law. We read about the ordination now of, with uh, the ordination of Aaron and his sons, the Kohanim, as the priests who are told to do things in a very, very specific way, hence why Nadav and Avihu ended up the way that they did. But also there is prophecy. And prophecy is not only about the letter of the law, but it's the spirit. It's the intention. It's the why am I doing what I am doing? And how does it add to me and to myself and to my identity and who I am? Jack who you are, the young man who stands before us, is a young man who is filled with spirit, who is filled with ruach, who is filled with a desire to move and to experience life to its fullest. Please, never, ever lose that. Never let go of that. That spirit is such a blessing. And what I noticed today, by the way, was how that spirit, that excitement, that energy infused each and every one of us. I listened to the cantor being singing out even greater because of the energy from you. You had me moving more even too, and you know I like to move. <laughs> and how awesome that is. <laughs> Okay, so anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, my friend, please never lose that. <laughs> because that is, that is how you experience life. That is how you experience love. That is how you experience God. And that is how you experience you. Never let anybody douse that. Never let anybody take that away from you. Be you. Be who you are. Be blessed in all that you are. Because Jack, my friend, I am grateful. We are grateful that we know you. We are grateful that you have this overabundance and wonderful, beautiful spirit within you. And it is with that that you bless us because of that. And so it's our opportunity now to take a moment and to offer you our blessings, blessings that have been passed on from one generation to the next, blessings that were passed on to you on, through your grandfather, through your father, through your mom, through your entire family, through your friends. Words of Torah we get to bestow upon you at this moment. So Debbie, Aaron, place your, arm, your hands on his shoulders as well as we get to offer you our blessings. Yivarechecha Adonai Ve'yishmerecha May God bless you and watch over you. Ya'er Adonai Panahav Eilecha Bichunecha May God's light shine on you, in you, and through you. And may God be truly gracious to you. Yisa Adonai Panahav Eilecha V'yaseim Lecha Shalom. Jack, may you always feel God's presence around you, always lifting you up and inspiring you. And may God always be there with you, giving you a life that is fill, filled with good health, with happiness, and with peace, with shalom. May this be God's will. Amen. We remain standing now as we turn once again in our prayer books. For Alenu Lishabeach, 
which we can find on page 586. Alleinu l'shabeach l'adon hakol L'atzeg l'lo l'yotzeh b'reshit Sh'lo asan p'goye haratzot V'lo asamanu k'mishpechot adama Sh'lo asam chelkenu kahem V'goor aleinu k'chol hamonam V'anahachnu korim ומשכחים ומודים, לפני מלך מלכי המלכים, הקדוש ברוך הוא. ונאמר, והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ, ביום ההוא, ביום ההוא, יהיה אדוני אחד. As we remain standing and our thoughts now turn to those who are no longer with us, yet whose memory is truly a blessing at all times. We remember those who have recently departed from our community, Mark Francis and Cecil Chakal. We also remember those whose yard sites, the anniversary of their passing, we recall on this Shabbat and during this coming week. Bessie Barkan, Kava Basin, Brenda Booker, Michelle Ciara Carew, Charles S. Cohen, Toby Cohen, Nanetta Eliezer, Albert A. Gary, Saul Goodman, Marlene Kravitz, Morton Arnold Greenblatt, Elaine Harris, Morris Kaplan, Rosaline Karp, Isidore Katz, Sandra Kerman, Yativ Matsur, Sterling McGrady, Janet Melman, Bessie Rayson, Judith Lee Rice, Edna Sampson, Grandma Saverin, David Schreiber, Jack Schwartz, Celia Schub, Edith Sugarman, Lorraine Schulman, Edwin Allen Seigel, Sidel Smith, Ree Wasserman, Louis R. Weinberg, Martin Bernard Weinberg, Fred Weiss, Sonia Walensky Willen. If there is anyone here who's in the period of mourning of Shiva, Shloshim, or Shana, the first week, the first month, or the first year of a loved one's passing, or you are observing a yard site, the anniversary of, loved ones, of a loved one whose name I have not called, I invite you as I face in your direction to please share their names with us. For all of them and for all those who have given their lives al Kiddush Hashem for the sanctification of God's holy name. And for all those who have no one to say Kaddish for them. We join together on page 598, Kaddish Yatom, our mourner's Kaddish. Yit Kadal, Yit Kadash, Shemei Rabbah. Bialma divrach yurtei, v'yamlich malchutei. B'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chayei d'chol beit Yisrael. Bagalau v'izman kari v'imru, amen. Yehei Shmei Rabbah Mubarach Le'elam Lomei Omaya Yit Barach V'yish Tabach V'yit Ha'ar V'yit Romam V'yit Naseh V'yit Hadar V'yit Ale V'yit Halal Shemein Kudasha B'richu Le'elam Min Kul Birchata V'shirata Tush Bechata V'nechemata D'aviram B'yalma V'imru Amen Yehei Shlama Rabbah Min Shemaya V'chaim Aleinu V'yal Kol Yisrael V'imru Amen O say shalom bin Romal, who ya say shalom, Aleinu v'alko Yisrael, v'imru, amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved, and let us say together, amen. So in just a moment, we'll close with our concluding song, and then we're going to join together in the living room, which is out to your left, uh, for a kiddush and a motzi in honor of Jack becoming bar mitzvah. So we invite you to take a little cup of grape juice. They're all grape juice, so take a little cup. Don't drink from it yet, though. And we will come out and join you in just a couple of moments to, uh, for our kiddush and a motzi. In the meantime, we have our closing song. So here we go. Feel free to put your arms around somebody. Maddie, come on up here. Come join us. Just Dorito, get up here. <laughs> come on up here. <laughs> 
Shalom, everyone.